Thank you for watching the broadcast today. We appreciate you tuning in and we appreciate you watching and learning from the word that we're going to be sharing with you today. I believe it's going to be a powerful, powerful lesson. So pay very close attention. I have as my special guest, my daughter, Jerry Ann, once again. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you. And are you ready? I'm ready. You ready to share some good things? Yes. Amen. I want to open today with 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and it says, but we all with open face, it's verse 18, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. In the Amplified Version, it reads this way, and all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the Word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transformed into His very own image. So this is telling us that God's Word is like a mirror. Mm -hmm. And when we look in this mirror, we don't see the way we see ourselves, or the way the world sees us, or the way other people see us. We see the way God sees us. You know, this morning before coming over here, I looked in the mirror. And the main reason why is because I didn't look, I didn't like the way I looked when I got up this morning. <laughs> My hair sticking up all over the place and, you know, and I needed to shave and all that. So I looked in the mirror long enough to change the image that was first appearing in the mirror. Yes. It was my image. It, it was revealing the way I looked at the moment. Mm-hmm. But I kept looking in that mirror until change came. Mm-hmm. And now look at me now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly the way you do God's Word. Yeah. When you first get in the Word, you know, you've got all these hang-ups, you've got all these things that you think about yourself, you are unworthy, you're no good, you're worthless, and all that. And that's the way you look Mm -hmm. to yourself when you first look in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But if you'll stay, it says if you continue to look in the mirror of God's Word, then it is going to reflect an image of the way God sees you. And the more you stay in this book, and the more you look in this mirror, the Bible says you will eventually be transformed into His image. Yes. You're going to become like He sees you. Yes. And that is an exciting thing. Now, it doesn't happen in a day. It doesn't happen overnight, but you got to start one night. Yes. That's the process you began uh, sometime back where you began to change your image of yourself and begin to see yourself the way God sees. So talk about that some. Well, I know this will break your heart as a daddy. But when I was growing up, I can remember looking in the mirror and saying, I hate you. I hate you. I would look in the mirror and I would say, I hate you. And it wasn't my face. I was, I was speaking to the inside. I mm-hmm. hate who you are. Mm-hmm. But now, like you said, with that scripture, when I got in the word and changed that image, I can, I can look at myself and say, I like who you are. And I still make mistakes. I'm not perfect. I haven't arrived. I'm, you know, on top of the world every single day. That's not the case. But I can still look at myself, mistakes and all, get back up as quick as I let my thought life go in the wrong direction. I get back up in the right direction. And I keep going. I don't wallow around like I Mm -hmm. used to in that regret and that self-pity and I'll never make it and I'm not good enough. I say, nope. I get back up and I get in the Word get my mind renewed. Like it said, it's a renewing process, transforming Mm -hmm. every single day. And now when I look in the mirror, I like what I see. I'm Mm -hmm. a little older now, but I still like what I see. And I'm not talking about my face. I'm Mm -hmm. talking about the inner man. The inner man, yeah. The inner man, I like her. But what's going on in here reflects out there. You can see it in your face too. You can see freedom in a person's face. You can see when a person is in deep sin. You can see when they're, you know, they're miserable, they're hurting. It shows up on their face, their appearance. But you can certainly see freedom too. Yes. I used to walk in a room and mainly with women. I Mm -hmm. would walk in a room and just assume they weren't going to like me. That's Mm -hmm. just the way I had trained myself to think as no one likes me and especially women, they don't like me. So I don't walk in a room like that. I don't expect that no one's going to like me they're going to like me. Mm -hmm. And I hold my head up high. And we're talking someone who's made some serious mistakes and in the natural should, 
be in shame, but my God has freed me, delivered yeah. me, that I don't have to walk in that Amen. shame anymore. Right. Right. I know who I am in Christ. I can hold my head up. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Not everybody's going to like me, and that's okay. Yeah. That's and okay. not everybody is too quick to forgive you either. No. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, they, they, they can't get past your mistakes. They keep wanting to remind you of that. But Paul says, letting go of the past. Yes. yes. Whether they do or not, you have to. Yes. The scripture yeah. here, Philippians 3.13 says, but I focus on one thing, and that's forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Yeah, looking forward. I'm not looking back. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to what lies ahead. And that's what I want to encourage you today is I lived a life of regret, regret of the mistakes I had made, the choices I had made, and regret is a time robber and a dream waster. Mm -hmm. That's what it does is keep you stagnant. It keeps you just never living the full potential. And Jesus said he came to give us life, mm -hmm. but not just life. Anybody can live life, mm -hmm. but it's life abundantly, Amen. abundantly. The Message Bible says better than we ever dreamed. Yeah, I love that. Better than we ever dreamed. Yeah. That's what God has in store for us. Mm -hmm. But you can never get there if you're looking back mm -hmm. and regretting the things you've done and who you used to be and all these hangups. I mean, it's just garbage. Yeah. And I had to remove that garbage and get it out and see myself in that mirror the image that Jesus had of me. Yeah. God sees us through the blood. Mm -hmm. right. He sees us through the blood of Jesus. Right. And when and we he believes in that blood, whether anybody else does or not. Yes. Yeah, right. And he actually, I think it's in your book, that he actually loves us the same way he does Jesus. Yeah. That's, right. That's powerful. It is. I don't love any of my children any differently. Now, some of them are a little easier to like. <laughs> yeah. But they... <laughs> I mean, God feels that way about every one of yeah. his children is that he loves us just as much as he loves Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when your mind can really grab hold of that and understand that the love of God is so vast that there's nothing that can separate you. Yeah. Nothing can separate you from the love of mm -hmm. God. Not your past, not what you're going to do. Anything can separate you from the love of God. It goes off inside of you and nothing can hold you down. Right. Nothing can defeat you. But like Kenneth Hagin has said, you know, people say to him, if you, will you pray for me? They'll never have another negative thought. And mm -hmm. he said, if I could pray that for you, I'd pray it for myself right. because they're going to come yeah. and we have to resist them every single day. Yeah. And I had spent too many years of my life letting the devil just run havoc all over mm -hmm. me and accepting every single thought that he brought my way. Yeah. But it's when I stomped my foot and I said, get Mm -hmm. then he left. Yeah. It's powerful. It is. It works. I don't care. I keep saying it. I don't care how old you are. It works because I know people say, well, I've been this way all my life. I'm yeah. not changing, but you can change. You can change. Through the word of God. Yeah. You've proven you can't change by yourself, Yeah. but it's through God's word Amen. that he can Amen. wash Praise the God. yuck away and make you who you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. And what a message he's given you as a result of it. Yes. And just think now, not just, not just women, I mean men too, but certainly a lot of women that are going through the same thing right now. People that are watching this broadcast, that are going through this, that can relate to what you're saying. And, and it, all be, it all started as a thought. Mm -hmm. it, it can all start as, as just a word somebody says to you. You know, your mom's in the studio here, and I remember when we first uh, moved here to go to work with Brother Copeland. And... Uh, I, I traveled with Brother Copeland every, every day, you know, and, and Gloria, his wife, Gloria. So I was with him, even though I was still in awe of the fact that I'm working with this great man of God. Mm -hmm. But they took me in like a son and just, just raised me on the word, you know. So I was around them more than your mother was in, in those beginning days because she was home taking care of raising you and Terry, and I was out traveling with him all the time. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I got to know them on a more intimate level than your mom did. And even though they loved her just as much as they loved me, you know, and, and uh, there were times when we would get to be with them, uh, your mom and I both. And one particular time, Brother Copeland was just starting his television ministry. This is way back in the early 70s. And we went over to Dallas to a studio to, to film these first programs. And uh, 
there was a man over there that was going to be his producer. He lived in Dallas, and he was a close friend of Pat Boone's. And Brother Copeland knew Pat Boone very well as well. And so uh, after we filmed several programs that day, this man invited us to come to his home and to have a meal. And so we're all over there, your mother and I, and of course, you know, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, and then this man who was the producer, he was a, a very successful, wealthy businessman. And, you know, he knew celebrities like Pat Boone and all. And you know, we're, we're just two little country bumpkins from Shreveport, Louisiana, you know, and, and we're in awe of all this. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm more comfortable around Kenneth and Gloria Copeland than your mother was, mm -hmm. okay? And so they had it set up like a buffet. Uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, it seemed like it was Mexican food, and they had it set up as a buffet. And we're going through the line, and Brother Copeland had me and your mom to come up in front of him. And so we're getting st uh, stuff, putting on our plate. Brother Copeland is standing behind your mother in line, and your mom is putting her food on there, and Brother Copeland says, Carolyn, you need to get rid of that. She thought he was talking about the food. She started to put the food back. He said, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> and she knew right then what he was talking about. It was that low self-esteem, that inferiority, you know. Yeah. She didn't feel like she belonged there. And he said, you got to get rid of that and do it now. Yeah. Well, that's when it started with her. But then she started praying and she asked the Lord, how did that get in me? Mm -hmm. And the Lord took her back to when she was a little girl at church. Yeah. And her Sunday school teacher said, today, go out and invite somebody, some kid your age or whatever, invite somebody to come to Sunday school with you next week. Mm -hmm. So your mother was all, you know, she was sold out to God, you know, whatever God wanted her to do, she was ready to do. So she went out and found two young boys her age, you know, about her age, and she invited them to come to Sunday school next Sunday, and they made fun of her. Mm -hmm. And she said that's when it entered, yeah. that when, the, she, when they made fun of her, something happened on the inside of her, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until years later with that incident with Brother Copeland saying, Karen, you need to get rid of that, that she finally got free. Now, it controlled her mm -hmm. all of her life. It controlled her during high school, even the first it, part of our marriage. Mm -hmm. She had her hang up. I had mine about being short. We got two people living in the same house and we both got hang ups, mm -hmm. you know, and, and nobody's doing anything about it. We're just living with it mm -hmm. until the word of God changed our lives. We got in here and got in this mirror, quit looking at that mirror in the bathroom and talking to ourselves about what we don't like about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we got in the mirror of God's word and saw the way God saw us and it changed our lives. Yes. Hallelujah. Yep. And it all started with you on that journey of transforming and renewing yep. your mind. Yep. I saw in the book, it says, winners control their thoughts about themselves instead of allowing their thoughts to control them. Amen. And 1 Peter 1.13 says to gird up the loins of your mind. It is so important that you are resolute and determined that you're not going to let anything sure. negative come in your thought life. And I'm telling you, for some people, I see some people, I know their lives aren't perfect, perfect, but it just seems like everything just flows and works for them. Well, I'm not one of them. Mm -hmm. I have to fight a battle, it seems, constantly. Because Satan knows where he can, yeah. where my weak areas are. So I'm on top of this. I gird up the loins of my mind on a daily hourly, minute basis yeah. if I have to. Sure. So that he's not bringing in those thoughts and I ex I have the choice to either accept them or reject them. Mm -hmm. And you will go in the most dominant, your most dominant thought, that's the direction your life will go yeah. in. But First Peter says to gird up the loins of your mind. Yeah, and notice once again, these, these phrases we're using from the Bible, resist, cast down, it's gird up, they're all active words. I mean, you can't be passive about this. You, you can't just want to be free. You can't just wish I was free. You, you have to become active. Yes. You, you've got to motivate yourself to want to be the person that God wants you to be. Yes. And sometimes you have to be your own best cheerleader. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of people 
many times that are going to come around and encourage you and say, you can do it. You can make it. Sometimes you just got to get up. I remember in the early days when I first started, I heard Brother Copeland say, he did this. I said, well, it worked for him. I'm going to do it. I'd get up some days and the thoughts of failure, you know, you're not going to make it. You're going to lose. You're going to fail. You know, you failed at this before. You're going to fail at this time. And I'd grab myself by the ear. I heard him say that. And I'd pull myself into the bathroom and look in that mirror and point at myself and say, Jerry Savelle, you are not a loser. You are not a failure. You are what God says you are. You are more than a conqueror. You can do all things. Now, boy, you get up and you act like you believe this stuff. Yes. And I had to become my own best cheerleader. Yeah. And I'd walk out of there and go, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and then go attack the devil and put him in his place. Hallelujah. Well, I heard Brother Copeland my entire life say that you cannot combat thoughts with thoughts. That's right. That you have to combat thoughts with the Word of That's God. That's right. So you, like your, your book says, the battle between your ears. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a constant battle in your thought life, but you can't sit there and war that battle thought to thought. It's got to be thought to word. That's right. Word. Word. And eventually I, that word will override that negative that's right. thought. I remember sitting in the service with Brother Copeland those early days when I was traveling with him and a morning service and he gave that illustration and I thought, wow, what a powerful illustration. Mm -hmm. I want to do it with all of you in the audience right now. This is what he did with us. I want all of you to start counting in your head, not out loud, from one to 10. Are you doing it? Now tell me your name out loud. Did you notice what happened when you open your mouth to tell me your name, the counting in your head had to stop. Why? Your mind has to shut up to hear what your mouth has to say. So you got this stuff going on in your mind, the devil telling you you're no good, you're unworthy, you know, you'll never amount to anything. You know, the way to stop that is with your mouth. You start saying what the word says, speak the word and your mind has to shut up to hear what your mouth has to say. I can remember times in those early days when I'm, I'm going through this transform process, you know, and the renewing of the mind. And I'd wake up in the middle of the night. Satan, wake me up in the middle of the night with thoughts of failure. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. You've been a failure all your life. You're going to fail again. And I'd have to get up and get my Bible and go downstairs to the den or the living room your mom asleep and me walking the floor and confessing the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I'd finally get victory where he would shut up. My mind would shut up and I'd go lay down and it'd start all over again. I'd get up, grab my Bible and start walking the floor again and confess that. And finally the Lord said, you've just learned the definition of perseverance. Mm -hmm. I said, what? He said, outlast the devil. Yes. That's what perseverance is. Yes. Outlasting the devil. Yes. Jesus said, once the word is sown in a person's heart, Mark chapter four, that Satan will come immediately, immediately. to steal it. Mm -hmm. So the very word that is setting you free, what's going to happen? Satan's going to try to come and steal it. He's coming. So that's why you have to constantly cast down those imaginations. Mm -hmm. don't, don't let the devil convince you or anybody else that you're not free because you still have those thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean you're not free. In fact, it probably means you are free. That's the reason the devil's dealing with your mind like he is because he knows you're free and he's trying to put you back in bondage. But Galatians chapter five says that we are to stand fast mm -hmm. in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. There's another active word, stand fast. Yes. You can't I, be passive. When I grew up, I can hear you saying my entire life, that your name was Jerry, having done all to stand, stand Savelle. Right. But that you were a quitter at one point. I've never known you to be that. Yeah, you never knew that, Jerry no. Savelle. But I've always heard you say, my name is Jerry, having done all to stand, stand Savelle. Yeah. And that's where you have to get in your life is that you Come will on. stand yeah. against this attack right. until you have victory over it. Amen. I say it like this. You have to develop the art of standing. Mm-hmm. Brother Hagin used to say, if you're prepared to stand forever, it won't take, take very, very long. long. Right. Yeah. So standing is just a part of your Christian walk. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I've said often, if I knew any other way to be a winner, then that's what I'd be preaching. Mm -hmm. But I don't know any other way. 
and I've been doing it this way for 46 years and it's still working. Yeah. So I believe I'll just keep standing yes. and keep persevering and keep outlasting the devil and keep enjoying victory. Praise yes. God. Right. I'm with you. You're with me. <laughs> Amen. You know, uh, before we leave there, I want to remind you that uh, Jerry has her own ministry and we're going to put up her uh, website on the screen so that you can contact her if you, uh, your church is interested in having her come and minister uh, in these areas then I certainly recommend her and I know it'd be a blessing to your congregation. So if you're watching and uh, you're not a pastor of a church, but you know there are people in your church that are going through these kind of things, tell your pastor, invite Jerry in. We need to hear this message, praise God. Also, uh, her book is available, Happy to Be Me. And it is our offer this week, along with my book, Free to Be Yourself. So this is all designed to help you Enjoy the freedom that God wants you to experience. You don't have to be bound up for the rest of your life. Amen. You don't have to suffer insecurity and inferiority and condemnation. That is all from the devil. Yeah. The Bible says there is now therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So if you're feeling bad about yourself and you don't have any uh, esteem, uh, you, you think you're so unworthy and no good, Guess where that's coming from? It's not coming from God. It's the devil. And if you resist him, he will flee. Yeah. I'm telling you, God's got an awesome plan for your life. God has some beautiful things in store for you. He says, I know the plans I have for you. They are good and not evil. Hallelujah. Yeah. So let me encourage you, get in this mirror and stay in this mirror and keep looking at yourself the way God sees you. And I'm telling you, you're going to be free for the rest of your life. Amen, Amen. audience. Amen. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise today. Praise God. Amen. Watch this announcement. And we'll be back in just a few moments. Are you comfortable with the way you were made? In Free to Be Yourself, Jerry Savelle teaches how God created you with your personality, interests, and physical body for a reason. You were tailor-made for the assignment that God has for you. Learn to use your thoughts and words to improve your self-esteem. Don't let your past define your future. You must let go of yesterday to enjoy the success that God wants you to have today. In Happy To Be Me, Jerry Ann Savelle Newton shares how after hitting the lowest point in her life, she laid everything at the feet of Jesus and learned to be happy being herself. It's time to be confident in your uniqueness. You were created with a purpose on purpose, and the world is waiting for your unique gifts. Don't hesitate. Call or visit jerrysavelle.org and request this freeing duo, Free to Be Yourself and Happy to Be Me. Today, develop the courage to be yourself and walk with confidence into the exciting future that God has for you. Thank you once again for joining us today. And don't forget the special offer in my book, Free to Be Yourself, Jerry Ann's book on Happy to Be Me. Jerry Ann, in chapter six of your book, you say, it's not over yet. There's a pruning process. You talk about hope and expectancy, grace and restoration, and dream again. Yes. Tell us about that before we leave. Well, if you have lung, a breath in your lungs, you still have life here on earth, and God wants you living it with purpose. Amen. A lot of people just feel like they've got to exist, you know, they're just existing in life and that God really hasn't used them or they don't have any significance, but we have a purpose, each Amen. one of us. I like to say that you were created on purpose with a purpose. That's right. Every one of us has a design purpose in life and it may not be to be in the pulpit, <laughs> yeah. but you have a ministry right where you're at. That's right. Wherever you're at in your life, you are Jesus to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to see Jesus on the inside of you. You know, I worked in Los Angeles for a while at a big company and it was very um, acceptable there to be um, homosexual or to be very liberal in your thinking, but it was very hush hush to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so you didn't go around, you know, talking, but I just, I just had it on me and I would have people come up and go, are you a Christian? They'd whispered, are you a Christian? Like it was a taboo thing. So there are people out in the workplace that need to see Jesus mm -hmm. on the inside. So every one of us have a purpose in uh -huh. life. Amen. It may not be full-time ministry, mm -hmm. but God has put a purpose on the inside of us. 
And if you're defeated with negative thoughts and low self-esteem and inferiority, you will never do what God's called you to do. Well, three things will happen. Number one, you're never going to live the way God wants you to live. Number two, you're never going to fulfill his purpose for your life. And number three, a lot of people are going to be robbed of their freedom because you won't share yours. Yes. And sometimes you're the own you're the only person that can reach that particular person. Yes. Right. You know, uh, I want to talk about this on next week's broadcast, but uh, growing up, as you well know, my dad raced automobiles, restored classic cars, built hot rods, motorcycles, and that was in my blood from as far back as I can remember. I think I was born with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it it's not like somebody who acquired interest for it or acquired a taste for it. I can't remember a day as far back as I remember that I didn't love old cars and motorcycles, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, God now has taken that and turned it into a major tool for evangelism, mm -hmm. you know, yet when I first came to the Lord, it was implied you can't ride motorcycles anymore. You can't drive hot rods anymore. You can't you know, go to racetracks anymore. You can't, it was all thou shalt not. Mm -hmm. Well, I figured they knew more about it than I did. So I gave all that up. But then years later, God gave it back and said, now I want you to turn what once was your passion into a tool for evangelism. Mm -hmm. And now today I formed charities like Christian bikers years ago. And we have led over 50,000 people to Christ, one-on-one -on -one evangelism, just through the motorcycle outreach. That's awesome. Not anything else we do, just over 50,000 people. This past few weeks, our team was in Daytona at Bike Week. Mm -hmm. There's over 300,000 bikers show up for this thing. Right. We had over 3,300 decisions That's in one awesome. week, just because of a passion for motorcycles. Yes. Now, if I had listened to other Christians who said, you can't do that and be a preacher. You can't do that and be a Christian. Look at the souls yeah. that may not be going to heaven because they would have been robbed of my testimony yes. or the testimonies of those men that work with us in this. Mm -hmm. But God is using it as a powerful tool. Yes. So God needs for you to come on and get free so that you can live the kind of life he wants you to live. Mm -hmm. Secondly, so you can bring glory to him while you're living that life. And thirdly, so you can be his representative and your message can be shared with those in whom you have a sphere of influence. So we need you desperately to get free. So why don't you go ahead and do it right now? Just make up your mind. I am not going to live this way anymore. Satan's not going to control my life. The son of the living God will set me free and I will be free indeed Amen. in Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you again next week. And until then, remember your faith will overcome the world.